Funding for Poets and Their Craft on Vermont PBS is provided by Phoenix Books, with stores in Burlington, Rutland, and Essex, Vermont. Phoenix Books, supporting our communities in everything we do, from books to authors. Details and information at phoenixbooks.biz. Vermont College of Fine Arts, located in Montpelier, fosters the excellence of established and emerging writers, designers, artists, composers, teachers, and filmmakers through its graduate level programs. Learn more at vcfa.edu. Northshire Bookstores, fostering discovery and serendipity for babies to the ageless, committed to building community one book at a time with locations in Manchester, Vermont and Saratoga Springs, New York and Middlebury Breadloaf School of English and Breadloaf Writers Conferences attract emerging and established faculty, students and writers from around the country. A summer tradition for more than 90 years. I'm Tamara Higgins. It has been said of today's poet Neil Shepard that his special gift is the expansive narrative of image with emotionally crisp lyric snapshots. His poems have appeared in numerous prestigious journals including Harvard Review, Paris Review, and Plowshares. With seven books of poetry to his credit, he's also a founding member of the Vermont Studio Center and founding editor of Green Mountains Review. Neil discussed and read from his work at a gathering in Johnson, Vermont. Here's Neil Shepard on the art of concealing and revealing in poetry. Our great-grandparents of American poetry, Emily Dickinson and Walt Whitman, gave us conflicting advice about poetic craft. Dickinson, famous for her compressed, metaphoric, sometimes cryptic lyrics, advised poets to tell it slant. She said, tell all the truth, but tell it slant. Whereas Whitman, the poet of expansive journalistic detail and robust narrative, told us more or less to tell it straight. Our grand forebears then have set us on a course ever since, tacking between what I'll call lines of poetry that conceal and lines that reveal. I wish I could say that the verbs conceal and reveal lead to their nominative, their noun forms, concealment and revelation. But it's not accurate since both methods, one that conceals and one that reveals, may equally produce revelation or obfuscation. For instance, perhaps the apparently straightforward poem, despite all its details, conceals multitudes, to use a Whitman word, and to think of Whitman's famous equivocations about homosexuality. While the gnomic poem, the one that conceals, might take us straight to the heart of revelation, or to paraphrase Emily Dickinson, sometimes the truth is too bright for human eyes, and the truth must dazzle gradually, or every man be blind. But generally, Generally, though I'm sure you can all think of a hundred exceptions to the rule, we can offer the following proposition. Poems that tell it slant, that is poems of concealment, often have at their heart a secret, a difficulty, a terror, a suppressed desire, an embarrassment, an enchantment that only slowly and with great resistance or great slyness comes to light. And conversely, the poem that openly reveals itself often overtly aspires to revelation, or at least to telling it all, telling it expansively with great heart, heat, and spirit. The former poem of concealment is often lyric, analogic, meaning it's metaphorical, fragmentary, or otherwise experimental in form, shifting time frames or perspectives, for instance while the latter poem that overtly reveals itself is often narrative, conversational, straightforward in its exposition, and more traditional in its unfolding. For many poets, including myself, we could probably locate both types of poems in their oeuvre. After all, poetic form, 
And by form, I mean all of the elements of craft that are marshaled to produce a specific effect of thought or feeling on the reader. All of these should change depending upon the goal of the specific poem at hand. At least, this should be so for a free verse poem in which, as Robert Creeley said, form is never more than an extension of content. And his friend and fellow poet, Denise Levertov, corrected him. Form is never more than a revelation of content. How does it do this? How does it, in long form, deploy not only stanzas and lines and line breaks, but also sounds and rhythms, rhetoric and diction, to achieve all it hopes to achieve? Let's take a look at several poems that I will, that will I hope, reveal to us what uh, is sometimes concealed, the craft that underlies and undergirds the magic. Because the Sundog Lecture Series is based in Vermont, I've decided to use mostly poems by Vermont authors to make my point. And perhaps it's easiest to begin with one's own poems, because at least to some extent, one knows or thinks he knows or remembers the triggering impulses that led to the poem's first cadence phrases and subsequently led to decisions about how the poem unfolds and unpacks its content either disarmingly conversational and straightforward or with considerable resistance, contradiction, erasure, and overall obstruction of meaning. The poem of concealment called